that, that'd be a little boring. I didn't know it was being recorded. Sorry, I just a second turned that on. I hope nobody minds. Um, I forgot. <laughs> I, forgot. I, I forgot. do mind because um, that's all right. I'm just so kidding. No, I, I'm, I'm saying uh, I don't have to repeat anything, I hope. Um, this is a quilt that I did. Um, and I did each one of them as squares. It's large, it's 58 inch square. And uh, again, I realized if I didn't do these squares opposite, for example, this is the solid part, the turquoise, and this is the bleach part. You know, I made this a little bit larger. Now it's kind of like a little bit fuzzy, but uh, I thought the larger, because on Zoom, is there a way to Zoom? Is there a way to Zoom on Zoom? Uh, I don't think there is, right? I I'm not. Think, well, I if, because you have this in a PowerPoint, I don't think you can do that. Yeah, I don't think I can zoom it. Anyway, uh, so these make continuous circles now uh, as a secondary design, which after I realized that, I just, um, wow, I love it. <laughs> I've done I've done these in uh, different um, sizes and different amounts. And um, so, what else was I going to tell you about them? Just that they're opposite. This is this is the area that's bleached out next to the red one where the background is bleached out. Yeah. Uh, this is a map of Lake Hodges. It was an exhibit with uh, quilts on the wall, and it's uh, <laughs> the exhibit was called Maps. And I take things very literally when I uh, when I go in an exhibit. Um, so you can't really tell because it's not that great of a photo. I have um, bleached out, I think, eight different uh, animals from birds to animals. And this is the legend that tells you what every footprint is. This is a piece that uh, I have, has, have had an art quilting studio last spring is uh, it showcased like four or five quilts. Um, this I, I pieced um, as a landscape because I knew I wanted to do a landscape. I pieced that first and then I just literally painted on the bleach for uh, this tree. I sketched it out with a pencil first and then bleached it. And then I used um, the end of a pencil for these stamps here, for the bleach stamps. And I said, I like to use wool. So that's why all my quilts have this texture because the wool gives such a, a nice loft. Uh, this is the back of this quilt and it's rusted fabric. Another one of my fun things to do because it just does it by itself. <laughs> um, I always put on a sleeve that is uh, noticeable. I, I have been in many quilt shows and have hung many shows. And sometimes you just don't know what's top and bottom. I mean, of course, the realistic quilt you would, but if well, a lot of times uh, we put sleeves in the bottom to make our quilts, um, you know, you might have a, have a bar in the bottom. So if that's the case, I would write top on, on the top. And then I also put a label on all my work, I try to, and uh, it's I put it upside down so that when you're in front of the quilt, you can read that label correctly, in my opinion. Um, this is uh, the freezer paper. So for example, if I had ironed that, this is the, the stencil for this piece, but this is not the same background. Um, that's what's good to take pictures all the time while you're working. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And then I was in this article, I'm like, heck, I don't have time to uh, redo this. Um, so again, my freezer paper is that area right here. And if I cut a hole in that freezer paper, which is that hole right there, I then ironed it on over here. And then that became, uh, all this area became the area that's bleached. So I think the one thing about discharge dyeing is that you have to kind of think backwards. You have to think backwards of, of what's coming out because now you're taking the color out instead of putting the color in. So, so forth, this was, uh, this piece would, would have been this freezer paper here that covered up the fabric as the resist. So a lot of times I don't uh, quilt, I wanna give a contrast between the quilted and the uh, 
the quilted and the non-quilted, the bleached from the non-bleached. This is another piece I've done in 219 and uh, it's 12 blocks and each block was done separately. But for example, the two red ones are kind of basically the same except that they're bleached differently. This one, the um, freezer paper would have been the X. It is the X. And the freezer paper here would have been these foot, foot walls. So besides having those two different stencils, I also have this stencil for three squares that are opposites. So that required another, uh, another stencil to make. Uh, I could send that article to you, Kathleen, and you can send it out if you wanted to. The article that had these pieces in it. Um, this is called Sticks, and uh, it's the Bargello design. I had that up on my wall for quite a while and um, just looked at it. And then I said, oh, yeah, I, the Bargello was fun to piece. And then I put something very um, straightforward, I thought. Uh, to, for the quilt as a design. So the next one called sticks goes with this one called stones. And stones was accepted into a show that Kathleen curated uh, in San Diego at Carlsbad for a porch gallery. I should have put that on there. And that had a white border where the other one had a, um, had a black border. But I made those two at the same time. I, I, I like making two things at least at a, at a time. I, I rarely work on one, one thing at a time. <laughs> this year I haven't done anything. And for some reason, my, my mouse is not, uh, where's, okay, here we go. And that's the one, uh, I called it bricks. Oh, wait, this is not the one I'm gonna show you. The one I, okay, sorry. Um, so the one I called bricks is the uh, freezer paper was all these squares. And then I was actually going to put three circles in it, but the one seemed like enough. And I think that's actually in Kathleen's home. What? Oh, she's muted. She's not going to tell me. Uh, and this was, you have it. That's good. Thank you. And to ask, uh, in case you want to ask, uh, this is a black on black, and I have made a, a detail of that. Anything, anytime you have a print on print, that you see that musical notes, they do not die. They do not uh, die with regular dyes, and they do not bleach, because this is actual print that black music signs on the black fabric. So, so that's kind of interesting. You know, like here's that little. Um, but otherwise, I really do like to use. Um, cotton fabrics without any design on them. But I threw that black on black just for fun. Just for fun. Now, this, so this is what I did this winter. I said, I'm in Chicago. And I said, oh my God, I got to do something. You know, it's snowy, it's snowing. This is in March. And um, so I got a whole bunch of, um, this was like a sushi container type thing. This is different lids, different uh, things. They're all recyclable. And what was so cool about them, I painted on the, um, uh, the toilet bowl cleaner and then I pushed it into the sand. <laughs> so now I just got a whole different look. This is a grate I found here in the alley. Oh, the, you know, when you live in a city, there's such, treasures in the alley. <laughs> so this is a, a big rusted grate and this is what the grate looks like. These are two uh, body pillows that I made for my daughter. Pillowcases, not the pillows, just the pillowcases. So she Mary, was, you uh, said you pushed into the sand. Obviously you're from Southern California. You meant to the snow, no. right? I said snow, I said snow. <laughs> You know what? Now that just gave me another idea. Well, when I get home, I have to go visit you. I should do. I should do some sand uh, discharge dyeing. It'd be fun to try. Yeah, it would be. I said snow. I said snow. You can clearly see this is all snow. <laughs> I don't know what I said. 
uh, so this was about four feet long. It was really, yeah. And it took like four feet to do these two pillows. I think this is about it. Let me see. Oops. Okay, so if you just want to do something, this is kind of a weird thing. Um, you know, if you just want to do a little try to start dying, this is stamped on, this is sprayed on. I mean, it's just, you could do a holiday, um, a holiday project and you, you won't go wrong. <laughs> I'm always trying to encourage people. I, I, uh, I think Kathleen and I were in the same show up at Fallbrook um, in the Brandon Gallery and I have nine of these and they're different compositions. And this is all different discharge uh, pieces that I had from classes and, and my teaching and things. So I uh, laid them out and this was a, a vertical composition. And then these are all stretched on stretcher bars. And this is rusted fabric that it's uh, behind. So I have nine of these. <laughs> that's a lot, right? Mary. Oh, that's it. Yes. Mary. Yes. On, on the last slide that you had, on the part that's on the right, you had a pink discharged area and a white discharged area. Right. Is that one solid right. piece of black fabric? Oh, this is a good, this is a good question. So this one right here is one piece of fabric, and these are bleached at different times. So, for example, um, this bleach was not left on as long. Brown first, uh, this brown sort of turned pink first, and then as you let it stay, it will definitely turn white. And this is a piece of batik. I don't really like using batiks because you're never really sure what's going to happen. I mean, well, maybe that's good. <laughs> but so batiks now kind of, you know, it already has a design. Now you have a design. I, I just like it a little bit simpler. So that's batik. That so the method of getting that bleach on the right part, it looks right. dribbled or spotted. Was that yes. using a paintbrush? Uh, I believe it was. Yes, I do. Uh, a thin one, a thin brush. Because these are, oh, I don't have the size on them. I think that these are about um, seven, uh, 16 by 24. Sometimes I use uh, a bleach pen, you know, that Clorox bleach pen. Mm -hmm. And that again, I would definitely date. That doesn't last very long either. The, the bleach in it does not. But if those lines are too thin for that, or too thick for that. Those are very thin lines. So that would be, a, that would have been a brush. This right here is a stamp. Oh yeah. Uh-huh, okay. And then um, this is one of my favorite stamps. As you see, I use it all over the stamp. And what that is, is a, uh, a tie holder from a Salvation Army. All my stamps that I use for bleaching have to be a little bit thicker. Rubber stamps don't work. They're too thin. So this I'm sure was the bottom of a, a McDonald's uh, takeout bowl. It's exact, it's a stamp, that's a stamp. And then that's my favorite stamps. And that was on a piece of rayon. Rayon dyes very nicely also. And rayon black always dyes out white. Yes, for some reason. But rayon is quite nice. Rayon is a, uh, it's a man-made fiber, but it is made from wood. And this is a uh, Kona fabric with, uh, uh, this is good, <laughs> with a bleach fin. I just stuck this in here. I don't, so I don't how long do you keep it on? Uh, it depends, you know, um, it depends where you're at and uh, it depends how white you want it to look. So I don't, I don't know if you notice my later work is probably more white because I'm letting the sun, uh, I'm letting it bleach through a little bit more. So you're putting all of this stuff out in the sun after you've sprayed it or painted it? Right. I only usually work outside. I, does that even make sense? I only usually, but in San Diego, I only work outside. So if I teach this class, it's an, out, it's an outside class. It's not healthy. Come on. <laughs> and uh, what I saw, so I do wear, um, you know, a respirator. I have, uh, and now we have masks. So everybody, everybody's used to wearing masks. And I uh, did a whole bunch. I did about five yards of this. Uh, border fabric because I wrapped each of my um, uh, stretcher bars with this same fabric. So it took about five. I want to be sure I had enough. I said I have nine of these pieces. Uh, I want to be sure that I had enough for 
all the wrapping of the frames. So I did a whole bunch of fabric uh, on the same material. And is that fabric yeah. spray bleached? This is spray bleach. Yep, 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 yep. So are you leaving it outside for what? An hour, five hours, 24 hours? Um, about an hour. Mm -hmm. About an hour, then you can wash it out. And um, if it's not enough, you could, you could do it again. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm not sure, you live in central California? See me, so, see me Valley. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just kind of depends. You know, if I work in the winter time, it's not very good. My, um, yeah. So you just kind of have to test it on your own. I'm not telling, I'm not telling. And it's fun, it's fun to try. You can immediately, especially if you have fresh bleach, you can immediately see it work. Mm -hmm. um, those uh, one piece I had, um, they, I've had pieces that did not die well. So I used lights from my um, automotive lights, from my garage and, and let it sit like overnight. <laughs> Cause it wasn't, I don't know, who, who knows? Who knows why? But um, I needed some really good direct sun. So, yeah. So have you ever, yeah, mm -hmm. have you ever tried to use decolorant and what is the shelf life if anybody on the Zoom knows what is the shelf life of a product like decolorant? You know, I have, someone gave me a whole big set of the decolorant and I believe if you don't open them, they're okay. They're not opened. Um, so I have to go home and try it. So what that is, is it, it is a bleach with paint in it and they're kind of expensive. So um, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I do need to try them. I have some very small jars of them. But as you bleach, now if you're using, say, red, it would put red, if I was bleaching this rayon, it would not only bleach it, and now that would be red. So that now gives a whole different look. I, I, I don't know if I could stand another look. <laughs> well, Mary, you mean, do you mean that the, um, the like this decolorant has different colors? Yes, yeah. yes, it's, it's Does all it? different. It's all different colors. So it takes and, the um, color out of the fabric and adds in the other color yes. at the same yes. time. Yeah. And that too, that too, you should be working with uh, fans outside. It stinks. It stinks. Um, I saw it done in a quilt show one time. And I, I, I got kind of mad at the guy. I think he's the guy that invented it. I said, you shouldn't have that in this building. I could smell you two rows away. But uh, it does smell, so you do have, but anyway, uh, if you can imagine it, and I would teach that sometimes, you can go in here and use um, any kind of, you can use inks, you, you know, you could use magic markers. I had a woman do um, I uh, a shirt, and then she went back in, say where I have all white, she went back in and put in some color. I mean, it's quite lovely. I, I, I'm just not real experienced with those, uh, that brand that uh, Sue asked about. I, I, you can go back in and, and, you know, I've gone back in and used magic markers and things like that. That was a really good question. <laughs> I'd forgotten about it. Uh -huh. Anything else? There's yeah, that's it. I don't really want to show you these, so, yes. There, one other question, Mary, was the, um, whether there's an environmental impact, let's see here. Oh, you know, um, that had to come from someone in California because, um, man, if you live in a city, everything is toxic. I mean, um, so I see what you're saying. And uh, how much are you doing? I'm not doing this as a business. I'm not doing this. I mean, I teach it and it's for recreation and it's for small items, but um, it is very popular here in Chicago. So I've been kind of thinking about doing jeans and, uh, and now I have that to think about. Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> was on the question. But for your own personal use, it's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. And if you live in California, everything's pretty clean anyway. It's, it's when you get into cities that things are getting dirty. It's quite a contrast when you're used to this, are you, you know, being in Chicago? I love it. I'm in a basement right now. I live in a basement right now. 
I live with my daughter and um, she has a full apartment in her, in her basement. And a little grandson. And a little grandson, yeah, yeah. I have no other questions. How long do you leave the bleach on the fabric? Can you watch it change? Yes, you, you can watch it change. Um, I, a lot of times I have to test my fabrics. I test them all the time, especially people uh, give me stuff. I buy things from secondhand stores. Now I'm getting stuff out of the alleys. <laughs> um, and there is, so, there is so much stuff right now that has uh, a little bit of polyester in it. It's absolutely amazing that hardly anything's 100% cotton, like your clothing. Um, so yes, you can. So I test my fabrics a lot, say in the evening time where there is no sun or anything like that. I just leave it on overnight and then I go and I rinse it out. I say, oh yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, you mean then I know what, color what that fabric is. What's that? Do you, mean, do you mean to see what color it will be? Yes, yes. Um, and then if you don't do it for very long and rinse it out, you'll say, oh, that blue uh, turned pink and then it would turn white. And blacks, um, they turn, they can turn reds, orange, browns, but they will all eventually turn white if you leave that bleach on long enough and it's strong enough. So I have a question about the shirt that you have on, Mary. You were saying that you also bleach that. Do you put yeah. some plastic in between the front and the back? Oh, does does the bleach go through? <laughs> tell, tell me, I don't know what the black back looks like. Uh, oh, yes, oh uh, yes, okay, good, good, good. Okay, so you you're gonna be doing this. You're gonna be doing this. I save all kinds of cardboard. I like putting cardboard in uh in my uh, t-shirts because then it doesn't go through. Yeah. So that's just a cotton t-shirt that you stamped with a McDonald's cup or something. Yep, yep. This Got one it. definitely is the bottom. This one, <laughs> this Got one it. definitely is the bottom of um a salad. Oh no, you froze. Perfect. What's that? No, you froze for a second. You said Sorry. it was definitely the bottom of, and then you froze a salad. Oh yes, container? yes, a salad container. This this one right here. That's very cool. <laughs> huh. So how many how many participants? Seventeen. Oh great. Oh great. That's I think all right. we, well we've got eighteen. I think we had more. A few people might have left a little bit earlier. Um, and and uh, you know my apologies again for no, messing no up the beginning. But um, you know yeah I mean, it is it is hard it is hard to remember. You know that central or eastern time. I don't know if anybody's been getting jobs from other areas but um yeah it, it's it's it, it's interesting the different times yeah well and also Sakwa has two zoom accounts and that's where i really couldn't figure it out um oh. but it looks like most of you are part of the southern california nevada region is that correct is anybody from a different region here you have to unmute to say so hi I'm barbara here. Oh, hi, Sue. Oh, bye, Sue. Hmm. Okay, there's Lori. Uh, I'm, from, I'm from a different region. I'm from uh, the Maryland, West Virginia, uh, D.C. Oh, great. Region. <laughs> and just saw it on, uh, on the Facebook group, and I'm excited to be here. Oh, I'm glad oh you're nice. I'm from northern Wisconsin and saw it on Facebook and thought it looked interesting. I've done a little bit of it, but not much. So it was fun. Great. You know, I joined a group here in Chicago. They're called PACA. Yeah, I used to belong to them. I still do, actually. Before oh, yeah, I yeah, moved, maybe. I lived in the suburbs. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I bought a place here. Oh, where? Yes, in East Garfield. Oh, oh, okay, nice. Oh, yeah. You'll love the PACA group. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, PACA. I don't know what that stands for. 
uh, professional art oh, professional. quilting associates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice group of women. But so unfortunately, they haven't done any meeting meetings yet. Right, they're still zooming. Yeah. 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 Well, it'll be fun when we can meet in person again, but it certainly limits how many people can show up. So yeah, that's one advantage to using Zoom is it opens it to everybody. So wonderful, you don't have to travel. Yeah. <laughs> So as long as I have everybody on here, I'm going to make a little plug for the domino effect. The um, call for entry opens on June 1st, and we're doing a show in Hillcrest at, um, uh, his name is Patrick Stillman, and it's called The Studio Door, and I think it'll, it's a really good opportunity, so I'm hoping that everybody's going to make something for that. It has specific uh, dimensions, so be sure to look at the perspectives on that it came out in the newsletter it's also on our on our page on the website to go to our region so and what, what was there a certain size for that 15 by 30 and it's supposed to and it'll be uh it'll hang vertically so it's it's kind of a it's the same um not dimensions but um you know, like a domino, you know, the idea that something happens and it causes other things to happen, you know, when the domino goes down and, and, and we actually made up the name of this, this whole concept before COVID began. So it's kind of interesting, um, you know, how things change meanings over time and mean different things to people. So, and also Art Quilts too will be opening in um, Santa Monica in June. I I think it's the 23rd. Do you remember, Lori? Is it, is it the 23rd? Of yes, uh, it is the 23rd. Are those dates um, set then? Those dates are set. Uh, what we don't know for sure is whether they'll be able to have an opening reception. Uh, we're hoping. Okay. We're hoping, but um, that's yet to be seen. But. Um, it yeah, because so because it that night there's supposed to be something and then it opens to the public the next day or something. Right, right. And um, they they have a an agreement with the restaurants nearby where the restaurants host those. They I mean really good food. I when they did it in 2017, it was really very nice. Um, so anyway, if anybody's in the area, Connie, I hope you'll be there. And um, Tara, I don't know, we're not that close, but we're gonna go. And uh, so anyway, that'll be fun. And, and uh, they've already opened their museum and have their, their first show is, is a sort of a fundraiser. I forgot what they call it, but anyway, it lasts a month. So they are actually already open. <laughs> so anyway, is there anything else anybody wanted to bring up while we're all here? All right, I feel like I gypped you out of 10 minutes of a Zoom by messing up my coming in. But uh, let's see, two more messages on here. Your, I like your eyeglasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. Oh, so Tara says thank you for sharing your technique. Oh. Fun. Love your playful oh. spirit. And uh, oh, Sue had to go. Got to go. So people are saying thank you. I can save all that stuff. But um, yeah, I've known Mary for actually quite a while because your girls were in high school when we first met. And uh, now so, so, yeah, so now they're 35. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so about 20 years. Wow. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It's a little yeah. scary. Yeah, 20, 20 years. That's yeah. Anyway, well, all right. Um, I'm hoping to have another Zoom next month. And um, I do have, um, uh, Marty Ornish has volunteered, but we haven't set down the date yet. So uh, keep tuned. And um, hopefully we'll be able to start meeting in person. So maybe the local groups will be able to get together uh, really soon in the, in the various regions. That'll be nice. So are any other questions? Any comments? 
All right. Well, I guess that's it then. Thank you so much, Mary. And I really oh, yeah. appreciate everybody's patience. I can't yeah. thank you for that. I'm so sorry. That was fun. My pencil. All right. I don't know why I'm fuzzy. <laughs> Is Bad connection in the basement. Is it just your camera, you think? I don't know. What? Oh, maybe I should wipe it off. <laughs> I don't know about that. My Is husband that got a new camera for mine, and all of a sudden, it showed way more than I wanted it to show. When I was <laughs> right, right. The change back to the other camera. Is that better? I think it is, actually. Oh, I never thought to rub that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But I do, I do keep a tape on it when I'm not uh, speaking. I do keep a tape on it. Uh, my sister does that. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm real picky about that. All right, bye, thank you. That All was right, fun. Well, thanks. Hi, Barbara, I didn't even say hi. And hi, yeah, Anne. hi, Barbara. Anne and Lynn and Cindy. Oh, Anne, I miss Andy. you. Mm. All right, I'll see you guys at the next time. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Kathleen. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.